SCP-610-L1. After establishing the containment perimeter for SCP-610, the Russian government approved our requests to research and investigate the area. For the first such exploration, a small camera-mounted unit known as Herbie was dispatched at a safe distance and directed toward Site A. Herbie has a battery life of 12 hours and a control range far wider than that required for this dispatch. Herbie is able to enter Site A without incident. The landscape around Site A shows early stages of assimilation by singular SCP-610 infected, who have fallen at largely random intervals around what remains of the village. Many of the homes appear to have suffered fire damage long since put out. However, a fair amount remain intact. Aerial reconnaissance of Site A, combined with thermal imaging, has put it at an estimated population of 79 infected. Immobile infected are included in this number. However, it is difficult to ascertain an exact percentage of mobile versus immobile. Varying degrees of physical mutation due to SCP-610 are present in Site A, and it is assumed that all the inhabitants are in advanced stages of infection. Herbie observed the exterior of the village for two hours, during which time all infected behaved with what appeared to be a loose sense of social structure. Because Herbie remained stationary during this observation period, it is unknown precisely what each individual infected person was doing. However, the central plaza experienced occasional bursts of activity and downtime. Requiring more information, Herbie was directed to follow an infected as it entered a home. There is a bumpy camera feed as Herbie scoots over the gravel behind the quickly shambling infected person. The interior of this home is the same as that attached to the primary file for SCP-610. The infected being tailed is the one sitting at the table. After entering the home, Herbie's camera was raised slowly as to not draw attention. This action was either unnoticed or ignored. The infected person is watched from the doorway as it hobbles around the home and stops at each of the other visible infected organisms. However, it appears to ignore the one under the table, which, while not immobile, does not leave that area. What this creature was before infection is unclear. After lapping the table and repeating this procedure three times, the primary infected person, known as Alpha henceforward, stops at the bedridden infected, known as Beta, and proceeds to assault it with furious punches. Beta is unable to leave the bed for unknown reasons, but is not completely immobile, as it flails its arms in response to the beatings delivered by Alpha. After several sustained minutes of this beating, a piercing sound explodes from the area around Beta, who then proceeds to project a cloud of unknown matter into the air from its chest cavity. Alpha lingers in the cloud as it floats in the air around them, slowly descending to the ground. The unknown life form on the table aside Beta begins to twitch in an apparent seizure, and Alpha then laps the room twice more, stopping again at each infected organism, but still ignoring the one under the table, as well as Beta now. After these two laps, Alpha seats itself at the table and reaches out to position the three plates atop it, as if setting a dinner set. After the plates are positioned, the facial tendrils extending from Alpha wiggle up and start to coil on one of the plates, before tearing apart and separating. This is repeated at each plate. The image attached to SCP-610's primary file is a still image of this occurrence. After each plate is filled with Alpha's flesh, it leaves the table and approaches Herbie, which is moved from Alpha's path. Alpha leaves the home, but Herbie's camera remains focused on the table. After several minutes, a group comprised of six to seven infected into the room from outside, still ignoring Herbie. Each infected shambles as if movement is difficult, jerking in large steps or squirming in small ones. These infected all surround the table, and each takes turns grabbing handfuls of the flesh substance left behind by Alpha, pressing it into whatever orifices on themselves that they can, some into mouths, some into the chest, some behind their backs some under the arms. When all the plates are empty, this group leaves. Herbie remains here for several more minutes before retracting its camera and leaving. Immediately after leaving the home, Herbie collides with an object. Panning the camera around, the obstruction appears to be Alpha, whose facial tendrils are intermingling with another infected having similar mutations. The impact is ignored, and the two infected part ways after several minutes. Herbie is then directed to explore more areas of the village. The remains of what appears to have been a store show signs of severe fire damage as well as activity inside the building, which Herbie moves to investigate. The door is slightly ajar, and with firm movements of Herbie it is pushed open. No notice is taken of this action, or it is ignored. Inside the store are several infected persons, most of whom are standing around. 
However, one is on the ground rolling back and forth over the space of approximately 0.3 meters, one foot, and is ignored by the others. Herbie rolls under the divider separating the cashier area from the customer area, and pans around behind the counter. The upper half of a person is protruding from a cellar door behind the counter. This person does not appear to be suffering from advanced infection, and wears the garb of a Russian soldier. Herbie zooms the camera in to confirm identification, and it is noticed the eyes of this person are in constant movement, often focusing on Herbie. The rest of the soldier does not move. Herbie is directed to leave this area, and proceeds to the back room. In this storage area, a large pile of bodies are stacked together. Some pieces of clothing are visible, and appear to contain both military garb and everyday clothing. No facial features are discernible on any of the bodies, due to the way they are stacked. Atop the bodies an infected sits, appearing to have its lower parts fused to the pile, and with its upper half in a wild state of flailing and seizure. Approximately every ten seconds, a burst of spores flies out the top of this infected, which linger in the air. Herbie is directed to leave the building. After leaving this building, Herbie passes by the village well, surrounding which are a series of immobile infected all facing the well. The arms of each of these infected persons are stretched out, one in contact with the next, forming a perfect chain, save for one whose arms are down at its sides. Herbie passes by this last infected to approach what appears to have been a town hall, or a mayor's building when the infected becomes mobile, and snatches the rover up. Video feed from Herbie focuses on the face of the infected, which is strangely in perfect shape given the condition of the rest of its body, which is horribly bloated. This infected was once a young girl from appearance, age estimated 10 to 12. Herbie is rolled to side in its grip, as its face stares motionless at the rover. The infected's face suddenly balloons in size and explodes outward into a series of fleshy flaps that grip Herbie and draw it inside. Herbie's video feed terminates here. Herbie was considered lost at this point. However, no one at Control remembered to turn off the video feed, assuming it cut. Five hours later, Herbie's video feed resumed, stationary, and at a raised level pointing at the upper rim of the village well. The video feed contains some blur due to what appears to be a slimy film which often oozes around the lens, but when not obscured provides perfect quality recording. Herbie does not respond to any remote commands, but its video jerks back and forth from target to target, zooming in and out of its own accord. Video feed is cut manually, and all connections to Herbie's unit are ordered erased. Proceed to next document, SCP-610-L2.